today, but this session is meant to be less formal and to allow uh, the ones who are chosen uh, to give about 10 minutes of um, their, their, their views and to... This is very unique. Okay, so um, let, me, let me just first call the people who are going to be um, uh, giving us their views. Uh, first, Dr. Fathi Malkawi. Hello. No, no, the first. <laughs> upgraded. You have been upgraded to number one. <laughs> Dr. Fathi Malkawi, Dr. Nizar Al Ani, um, our uh, Rais Ul Ulama, Jamil Osman, because Mustafa Cherish is not here tonight, so he has been upgraded as well. Um, Dr. Manzur Alam, I will be reading his uh, message. Pak uh, Habib Kherzin. Yes, yes. um, uh, Prof. Ahmad Faris. Prof. Ibrahim Zain. Datu Dr. Muhammad Noor Manuti. Prof. Rosnani Hashim. Uh, Dr. Tamim, Prof. Tamim. Maybe he's on the way. And uh, Prof. Mumtaz Ali, I think also coming maybe, yeah? So if you would please come to the, to the front, please. Take the seats. <laughs> and we have, uh, I don't, I'm not sure where this debate style came. So three here, three there. <laughs> uh, you can choose any seats. There's no, there's no preference for seats. And then you're going to be alone, or maybe. <laughs> okay, Dr. Tamim and uh, uh, Prof. Tamim and uh, Prof. Mumtaz are not here, so we will begin. All right, so as we mentioned, this session is going to allow our speakers to uh, talk about their experiences with Dr. Al Hamid. And I was told that we are allowing up to 10 minutes each, up to, not more than, uh, uh, less than 11. So many ways. And I know I have to say that because if I don't give the time limit, we will be here until tomorrow morning. Um, so please, we, we, we welcome everybody to give their opinion. If we have time at the end, we may open to one or two others who are, who are here and who would like to say something. Uh, but before I give the floor to the first speaker, I'm going to abuse my position as moderator and, and start by saying that I first met Dr. Al Hamid in 1987. Maybe Prof. Rosnani may, may remember when he visited us on the invitation of the then Minister of Education, uh, Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim. He visited IIUM. And I remember as a student, uh, we saw Dr. Hamid coming and walking around the campus. Little did we know that a few months later, he was going to be appointed the first, the, the, the second rector of the university. So 1987 was the first time that I think he also came to the campus in Pataling Jaya, for those of you who know. So with that, let me first invite Dr. Fathi Malkawi to, to get the ball rolling, so to speak. So Dr. Fathi, you have 10 minutes, but if you wish to give away some of your time to others, it is very, very welcome, but the floor is yours. You can sit down and stand. It's up to you. You cannot see me. I am too short to be seen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah rahman rahim. I am very lucky to be upgraded in this session. Uh, from the session of tomorrow and from the last in the list to be the first in the list. <laughs> so I'm lucky for that. Uh, thank you, 
بروفيسور اسلم هذه مش نكتة هذه حقيقة الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أعتقد أن هذه لحظة من اللحظات السعيدة التي يمكن أن نتذكر فيها لحظات سعيدة مع هذا الرجل الذي نأمل أن يكون سعيدا عند ربه الآن نسأل الله له الرحمة والمغفرة والرضوان كنت في بعثة من الولايات المتحدة إلى السعودية في عام 79 وكان ذلك في رمضان ودعينا إلى إفطار رمضان في بيت عبد الحميد أبو سليمان وكان على الإفطار هشام الطالب جمال برزنجي رحمه الله أحمد توتنجي طه العلواني في بيت المرحوم عبد الحميد وكانت هي المرة الوحيدة الذي التي أراه فيها شخصيا لكن كنت في بريطانيا في سنة 71 واسمه كان من الأعلام في مجال الحركة الطلابية في أوروبا وفي الولايات المتحدة كنا نسمع بهذه الأسماء المهندسون الثلاثة والآيات الآيتان الشيخ طه لم يكن معهم في ذلك الوقت الشيخ إسماعيل الفاروقي رحمه الله وعبد الحميد أبو سليمان رحمه الله ولكن كان اللقاء الأول كما قلت في بيته في عام تسعة وسبعين وبعد أشهر قليلة كان في مؤتمر الجمعية العلماء الاجتماعيين المسلمين في أمريكا وطبعا أنا كنت في ذلك الوقت طالبا في جامعة ولاية ميشيغان فحضرنا المؤتمر وكان من الحضور أيضا المهندسون الثلاثة والآيات الثلاثة الشيخ طه كان موجودا في ذلك الوقت وأذكر أننا أنني كنت الإمام في صلاة الفجر في ذلك اليوم فبعد الصلاة جلس إلى جانب الشيخ طه وأثنى على قراءة للقرآن ثم تكلم عبد الحميد أبو سليمان وجرى بيننا حديث وقال أمهلوني فترة قليلة أعود ذهب إلى غرفته وعاد بورقتين أو بحثين أحدهما كان عنوانه الترويح في الإسلام فقلت له الترويح أنتم رجال فكر ورجال علوم اجتماعية وتتحدث عن الترويح قال اقرأ الورقة وستجد أن فيها شيئا مفيدا إن شاء الله كان ذلك العام 79 الذي التقيت فيه مرتين ثم توالت اللقاءات الحمد لله إلى أن يعني فصل الله بيننا بين الدنيا والآخرة طبعا ذكرياتي مع عبد الحميد كثيرة وكثير منها كان لقاءات خلاف وكان أول مرة أختلف معه في عام 89 جاء إلى مؤتمر المجمع الملكي لبحوث الحضارة الإسلامية في الأردن الذي عقد في عام 89 بالتعاون مع المعهد العالم الفكر الإسلامي وكان مما قاله يومها مسألة سيناء العصر أي الأسرة الأسرة هي الفترة التي يمكن أن ينشأ أو ينشأ عليها الطفل وإذا لم ينشأ في الخمس سنوات الأولى فلن ينفع أي تنشئ بعد ذلك فقلت له يا رجل اتق الله عمر بن الخطاب كم كان عمره عندما أسلم أبو بكر فلان إلى علا قال هؤلاء خياركم في الجاهلية خياركم في الإسلام, في الإسلام هؤلاء كانوا شجعان كانت شخصيات ممتلئة من الرجولة ومن القوة ومن الاستقلالية ومن العقل النقدي ولذلك عندما أسلوب بقيت هذه الشخصية ولكنها تحولت من شخصية جاهلية إلى شخصية إسلامية وطبعا الكلام أخذ وقتا حتى أستوعب 
هذه الفكرة وكثير من الأفكار التي كان وأنا يعني يمكن عندي هذه العقلية النقدية اللي فيها شيء مما عنده وما عنده في العقلية النقدية أكثر بكثير على كل حال الوقت اقترب من النهاية عبد الحميد أبو سليمان إذا قرأتم الورقة التي أعددتها لهذا المؤتمر كان عنوانها التجديد عند عبد الحميد وقراءتي وأظن أنني قرأت كل ما كتب أظن كل ما كتب أظن بل أجزم أن عبد الحميد أبو سليمان على الرغم من أنه لم يكتب شيئا في موضوع الاجتهاد والتجديد إلا أنه كان مجتهدا وكان مجددا هو يعرض رأيا في مسألة من المسائل يقدم فيها اجتهادا ويقول هذا اجتهادي ورأيي وأنا أقدمه لأهل العلم وأهل الخبرة ليقولوا فيه في ذلك رأيهم أما التجديد فالنصوص التي يمكن أن تجد التجديد في كتابات عبد الحميد تتوزع على عدد من المجالات منها لفظ التجديد والاجتهاد والجهاد والجدية يعني الألفاظ اللغوية ذات الصلة المباشرة بالتجديد ومنها الألفاظ الخاصة بالمعاني الخاصة بالتجديد التغيير الإصلاح إلى آخره ومنها المصطلحات المقابلة للتجديد أي التقليد والركود والجمود وما إلى ذلك إلى إضافة إلى عدد من المصطلحات الكثيرة الخاصة بالبناء والإحياء أنا قمت في ورقتي بتحليل لفظي لهذه الألفاظ ذات العلاقة بموضوع الاجتهاد فتبين لي أنني أستطيع أن أقول بكل بساطة وبكل ثقة بأن عبد المجيد عبد الحميد أبو سليمان كان مجتهدا وكان مجددا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه جزاك الله خير thank you very much دكتور فاتي only took seven minutes seven minutes you may be very surprised he gave you three minutes but but we need to get Prof Ibrahim would you do this and in one minute give a brief English <laughs> summary of what was mentioned. Well, it's, it's very difficult to make it in, in I heard 1979 minute. in Iftar in Dr. Hamid's house. Then it went. Well, I, I, I think if, if I were to give a summary, I should say this, that his experience was very rich. Yeah, his experience was really very rich. But the main focus of his experience was this uh, critical in, in encounter between him and Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. Uh, and he engaged Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman in different issues. And finally, he concluded that Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman was a mujaddid and mujtahid of perhaps this century. Alhamdulillah, it's wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah, we have, I think we can use this. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fatih and Prof. Ibrahim for that wonderful start. Um, the next experience with Dr. Al Hamid was when he became rector. <coughs> and some of you will remember this. Almost the first thing that he did was he organized an evaluation seminar for one week. I know that Jamil will remember this, maybe. Uh, one week, he got everybody in the university, the students, the staff, the admin staff, to look at what we had accomplished in only five years, the first five years, from 83 to 88 when he joined us. He wanted to have an evaluation of what we have done, right? What were the shortcomings? And what should we be doing you know, in the next... 10 years. And that was Dr. Abdul Hamid, the, the, the planner, the, the one who was very meticulous in knowing the details. Yeah? So that was the second, at least my experience with Dr. Hamid. Prof. Nizar, you have your 10 minutes to please give your experience or your thoughts or your views on Dr. Abdul Hamid. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Salatu wassalam ala habibi al-Mustafa. 
وعلى عباده الذين اصطفى اللهم أن يعوذ بك أن أضل أو أضل أو أزل أو أزل أو أظلم أو أظلم أو أجهى أو يجهل عليه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أنا راح التقط شيئين حدثين صغيرين وحدث أطول من عشرات أو مئات الأحداث مع أبو أيمن رحمة الله عليه الصغيرين مرة دعاني قال لي أبو نزار طبعا أنا نزار وابني أيضا اسمه نزار فقال لي أبو نزار تعال عندي للمكتب فرحت للمكتب قال لي عندي بعض الصور للخطوط العربية بالثلث حتى نضعها في المسجد عندما كان يؤسس لي قومة. قلت له اوكي انا متصور عشر صور خمس صور طلع لي 380 صوره 380 صوره جامعها مع بعض وهذا الثلث الاول وهذا النسخ وهذا ال... و... و... ونقعد ونت... و... 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 انا متصور ربع ساعه نصف ساعه ل... لخمس الى ست ساعات يعني نريد ان نلتقط يعني ما الافضل او الاحسن او نعتقده على الاقل الافضل الرجل كان يعني مو ريكتر ياخذ الامور العامه يعني كرئيس جامعه كان يتابع التفاصيل بادق من الدقه دقيق الى ابعد الحدود ويعني يتابع الصغيره قبل الكبيره وانا كان عميد ثم عميد يعني كنت على اتصال بهذه الطريقه كان يتابع كل صغيره وكل كبيره أنا ما أريد أطيل. النقطة الثانية مرة أنا كنت مجتمع مع رؤساء الأقسام كعميد للمعارف الوحي يعني معاون عميد العميد ما أعرف كان كانوا يسموني ولكن كنت معتمد مع بعض رؤساء الأقسام وكان عندنا التسجيل راح يأتي بعد حوالي أسبوعين فتح علي الباب وإذا أبو أيمن رحمة الله عليه قال يا أبو نزار عندك عائلة عندك جسمك ونفسك ساعة كم هذا الساعة الساعة 12 إلا 10 منتصف الليل قلت له وانت ما عندك عائلة يا أبو أيمة وانت ما عندك جسمك وحل... يعني أنا جسمي وجسمك ماله يعني وعائلتي وعائلتك يعني لماذا لماذا عائلتي وجسمي وليس جسمك وعائلتك انت تعمل هنا الساعة 12 إلا 10 بالليل يعني هذا هذا الرجل اللي كان ياتي الساعه قبل الثامنه صباحا ويخرج بعد الثانيه عشر منتصف الليل وهو بعمر يعني يعني مو قليل لما يعني كان في الستينات ورحمه الله عليه كان في هذا النشاط الذي يعني ما اعتقد كثير من الشباب يستطيعون ان ان يؤدون ذلك النشاط فهذه بالدقه والنشاط لكن ياتي الى امر يعني لا يزال بالنسبة لي أهم حدث حدث لي مع الدكتور عبد الحميد أبو سليمان رحمة الله عليه يعني. كنا في بيروت علشان الجامعة الإسلامية في لبنان في طرابلس وتعشينا وخرجنا أنا هو فقال لي أبو نزار هذا كتاب جديد طلع لي مال ضرب المرأة أه فاقرا الله يخليك ونتناقش به بكره ان شاء الله قلت له حاضر ثاني يوم ايضا عشان هو يتعشى عشاء خفيف جدا وجلسنا اخذنا جانب انا وهو رحمه الله عليه وبدانا نتكلم قال لي اريد رايك قلت له والله رايي من الافضل ان لا تسمع قال لا يجب ان اسمع فبديت من العنوان قلت له العنوان غلط لانه هو مو ضرب المراه ضرب الناشز والا لازم نقول ضرب رجم المراه وقطع يد المراه لا يعني هو بديت الفرضيات وبديت بالمنهجيه وبديت باللغه العربيه وبديت بالقران الكريم طورت حوالي 50 ساعه 50 دقيقه فكان يبتسم وقال لي جزاك الله خير وما رد علي بكلمه واحده قط المهم في اليوم الثاني كان عندنا الصبح اجتماع بعد الظهر كنا مدعوين انا وهو الى البقاع الى كليه ازهر البقاع 
كان داعينا المفتي مال البقاع والله نسيت اسمه أه الله يبارك بي يطي الصحة والعافية فجاء أه توفيق العوجي أجرنا سيارة أنا ودكتور عبد الحميد وطلعنا إلى البقاع وكانت محاضرة للدكتور عبد الحميد على طلبة كلية أزهر البقاع جلس الدكتور عبد الحميد مع المفتي زي الدكتور فتحي وهنا أنا جلست ده قال لا دكتور نزار تعال هنا قلت له انا انا مستمع قال لا تعال هنا مكان دكتور ابراهيم انا جلست هناك خلص كراما الي يعني اعتبرت بها نطى المحاضره حوالي 50 دقيقه هنا تبدا المساله فقال المفتي البقاء الان افتح باب الاسئله قال لا 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 ما في اسئله في تعليق للدكتور نزار على الكتاب يعلق تعليق كامل والأمس أخذ خمسين دقيقة معي يأخذ خمسين دقيقة الآن ويقول كل ما قاله لي أمس أنا الحقيقة أصبت بحرج أنا ما أحرج لكنه يعني ما بيني وبين يعني كان شكل مختلف تماما أنا ويا جارسين وقاعدين ونتكلم أما الآن وهو تكلم فحاولت لكنه أصر هذا هذا الاوبر مايند هاي العقليه المتفتحه التي تسمع للراي الاخر فكنت اريد اختصر يقول لا لا النقطه هذه ما ذكرتها لا حول ولا قوه الا بالله اقولها واروح قال اللغه العربيه اللي قلتها امس على الضرب ما قلت ولذلك خلاني ارجع الى كامل واخذت حوالي 40 دقيقه ارد على الكتاب بكل شيء خلصنا طلعنا تعشينا بالبقاع ورجعنا قلت له يا ابو ايمن يا ابو ايمن تحرجتني يعني انا ما بيني وبينك من حديث خير لما اكون اني يعني مع الخ... قال لي يا ابو نزار هؤلاء طلاب يجب ان يتعلموا على الراي والراي الاخر يجب ان تكون عقولهم منفتحه وامامي وعلى كتابي وانت اخي وحبيبي فلذلك ما اني اني فرحان جدا انك تكلمت بهذا الموضوع. هذه هذا موقف طبعا يعني لا يزال حتى هذه اللحظه اثر بي كثير جدا في تقبل الراي المخالف وفي تقبل الاشخاص الاخرين. رحم الله ابو ايمن رحمه واسعه وجزاه عنا وعن الامه كل خير والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته. عليكم السلام. Thank you very much, Dr. Nizar. You also have given extra time, and that gives us a wonderful opportunity to again get Prof. Ibrahim to give a one-minute summary. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, this time I'm ready. <laughs> Professor Nizar was saying that he would be speaking about two events, two important events. Yeah, I accept that. <laughs> He will be speaking about two events. One of them is, is a minor event, and the other is major. So there are three. Oh, I, 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 I missed a very important, I guess, event. Now, he, he was saying that there are three events now. They are not three events. Two minor and one major. So the two minor events were about the day-to-day running of the university where Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman was somebody who was caring about the administrators, administrators who work with him. Uh, one of them is about balancing life and, 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 and work. And the other one is about what? Muhammad Tahir. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The second one is about the calligraphy. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman wanted to give his views about the calligraphy that's going to be put in the in the masjid in gumbak masjid and he called nizar and said to him come to my office i need your opinion on this arabic calligraphy and uh, nizar thought that it's going to be five or ten minutes two slides three slides so when he went there he found like more than 300 <laughs> pieces of of art and he was to give his opinion. And they sat down there for so many hours. 
And this shows how he was looking into the details. I mean, Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman, he was director of the university at that time, but he would get into the minor details and the important things, not only the overall picture. Now, the major thing was about uh, an article, a very controversial book. It started as an article and then later became a book about, yeah. Uh, it started as a, uh, an article which was published and then became a book. Uh, and then this book, he gave it to Nizar and asked him to give his opinion. And Nizar was very critical. Uh, and he said so many things about the, the book. And Abdul Hamid was listening to him for like 50 minutes. And he didn't say anything. The next day they were having uh, uh, a lecture which was supposed to be given by Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman on the book. And when he, they reached the venue, then Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman said to him, listen, uh, you have to come and sit uh, there next to me. And he didn't know what, for what to do that. And then Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman talked for like 50 minutes. And then he said, when the Q&A session was supposed to start. He said, no, Nizar is going to give his views about the book. And he forced Nizar actually to say all the things that he said in private. And it was a very embarrassing moment for him. But at the end of the session, he was telling Nizar, listen, these are the students. They should know how to voice their, their thinking and how to criticize each other uh, and this is one of the trainings, uh, one, of, one of the exercises that they should go through. And he was very happy that it happened the way it happened. I'm sorry, I've taken more than one minute. <laughs> no problem, because this time you are ready. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, from, from, the, from the Arab world, we will now move to the Malay world. Right? Speaking and speaking Malay, so now who is Dr. Ibrahim will also translate into <laughs> <laughs> um, But before that, I just want to give this idea about Dr. Bilhamid having very unique interpretations of things. I remember the third occasion in 1990, the Kulia of Economics organized a, a workshop on teaching Islamic economics in Langkawi. I don't know if anybody was here in Langkawi. And I remember we used to take walks along the beach and he would talk about his ideas on economics, Islamic perspective. And I remember as a young, you know, person who just joined the university and who had read the Islamic economics <laughs> text that we had, I was thinking these were very radical views, views on riba, um, you know, and, and many other areas. So he was really a very unique person and had very radical ideas sometimes. So with this, I invite um, Prof. Emeritus uh, Dr. Jamil to give his experience with Dr. Hamid. I think he was one of the few of us who spent many, many, many years with Dr. Hamid. So Dr. the floor is yours. <clears throat> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Aslam. Uh, our beloved speakers, Dr. Fatih Mekawi, Professor Faris, the Deputy Director of Academic IAUM, Professor Ibrahim, was the former Dean of the Kuliah of Amdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Uh, Professor Magno Manuti was also the former Dean of Student Affairs at the University. Professor Dr. Niza Awani was with, with us in the Senate. He was the Deputy Dean of the Kulia and Pa Habib and Professor Rosdani who was responsible for the establishment of faculty education together with Prof. Hassan, Prof. Hassan and all the others and all other members some are young, some are old, I don't know. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to share this uh, important experience. Uh, I have been with Professor 
Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman uh, since he came here in 1988. At that time, I was the, the deputy dean of academic of affairs of, of the Kuli of Economics because I joined the university in 1983 with the first rector. And in 1985, I was sent to do my PhD in the US and came back in 1988, just in time when he came back, um, I was already being appointed as the deputy dean. And later when he came, he appointed me as the dean of admission or record. I do not know what is the job of dean of admission or record. As far as I know, I will become the registrar of the university. Uh, nothing to do with academic. But in the first place, I did not accept uh, the Toan. He just sent uh, the offer letter to me. Uh, the two deans that have been appointed, myself and Dr. Manu, Manuti, he was appointed the Dean of Student Affairs. So we are very fortunate that uh, what I will be talking here is about uh, his contribution to the the development of an integrated based university, which is not that, that easy. Malaysia has got independent for 25 years. We have been fighting to get a university, but we, uh, in Islamic university, we didn't get it. So only when Brother Anwar Ibrahim was appointed as the minister, when he joined the cabinet with Tun Mahathir, and he was appointed as the the, uh, the deputy minister and led to the minister and the um, minister of education then he invited Dr. Abdul Hamid to be in the team uh, of the establishment of the university to build our university we need a leader so a leader in a teamwork Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman Mahom he is the bond leader but the bond leader, he was the one who established MS, responsible for establishment of MSA. WAMI, if so, triple IT. And with this kind of leadership and network, he is able to build this kind of the university. As has been mentioned by Sister Aisha Gabra from Kenya this, this morning. Uh, his approach is theoretical and practical. There are some people who have the theoretical. They may be, they may be good at Islamization of knowledge, theoretical aspect, but they never had the opportunity to be the leader to build a university. And his thinking, his vision and mission was for the Ummah. It's again, his background, being born in Makkah, he has been together with the the Ummah in the in the Makkah in Makkah, and uh, uh, he knew the culture of the Muslim who who came to Makkah from all over the world. So when he came here, of course he has the vision and mission to help the Ummah. International Islamic University should not be a university for Malaysia. If it is for Malaysia then we should have it in Bahasa Malaysia. There's the first university that was brought to the parliament to be, to be taught in English and Arabic. It was the first university in the country. So to do that, we need a leader. With brother Anwar Ibrahim is there as a minister of education. Then Alhamdulillah, IAUM has become the University of the Ummah. But for the first five years, the university was not expanding because the philosophy of that university at that time, when we had discussion in the Senate, should we have, uh, should we recruit more students to join the university or take less students, but we call it, we produce quality students. That was the argument. Of course, Professor Kamal was in favor of having small number of students and uh, produce the quality student. When Abdul Hamid came, there was an argument. He said that, okay, Professor Kamal, you take 100 students to the university. All of them are excellent. How many percent? 90% excellent, 99% excellent. So you produce how many students? 
you produce 90 students. If you take 1,000 students, 10% are excellent. 10% of 1,000 is already 100. It's more than nine, more than more than the, the quality. So he won. He won the case. Finally, uh, the idea is to expand the number of faculties. So when he came, he started to expand the number of faculties. He listened to all. He did not implement his ideas. As Brother Islam was saying that he, he, he listened to the student, he listened to the staff, and he did not counter back. And then only when uh, he talked, he come up with his ideas, and nobody argued. And then after that, his ideas are being accepted. So this thing was brought to the Senate. We, they formed the Kuliah Islamic Review Knowledge and Human Sciences. And always, always there was argument, as Professor Stamin was saying this morning, whether to have a faculty of Islamic studies, separation faculty of human sciences, but his idea, faculty, the Kuliah of Islamic Review Knowledge and Human Sciences. That's where integration coming in. And then this Kuliah of Review Knowledge will serve all other Kuliah, economics, laws, and at that time, we demolished the. We we do not have any more the center for fundamental knowledge that was initially established in 1983. So, uh, all the Islamic courses are being taught, are being served by the Kuliah of Review Knowledge. So, from that time onward, uh, he he drew up the plan he, by having the Kuliah of Laws, Kuliah of uh, Review Knowledge, Kuliah of Education, and of course he invited Professor Faris. He's among the few being recruited at that time to, to set up engineering, Kuliah of Engineering, Kuliah of Medicine, Kuliah of Architecture, and whatever Kuliah that uh, should the Muslim should master uh, are being established during his time. Um, okay, he completed with the Kuliah and then developing the curriculum. Of course, there are not many people who can develop the curriculum. That's where he started. Professor Ibrahim was there already. Uh, Tamim was already there. He invited all the, his colleagues through the network that he, he, he established in the US and in the WAMI, in the Triple IT. He invited all his friends, his scholars to all over the world. And they came to help him to establish the curriculum. So having the curriculum, then we started to have intake of students. So that's where he started to take students from uh, all parts of the world. I was responsible for taking the student. We Dr. Ibrahim was my, <laughs> my deputy uh, of international students. Uh, so he's counting how many more countries that we need to take, how many more countries. So he want to make sure that all countries in the, in the Muslim world will be represented until we manage to get students from more than 100 countries. They all come with full scholarship. Very few who, who came here without any, any scholarship. So the time is limited. And the fruit from, from what he has already uh, planted in the university, now we have 96,000 alumni throughout the world from 125 countries. So, and currently we have 27,000 students in four campuses. and there are many more if you want to talk about Amdo Hamid. So I stop here. I give opportunity to Pa Habib and Dr. Sani and Dr. Brian and all the others. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaikum salam. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much, Dato. You know, talking about getting the students from all over the world, and I believe somebody gave an example earlier today about somebody who was relatively not so academically qualified but was still put into IIUM. Our Kulia of Economics was always notorious for refusing to take students. I remember there was many cases when, wow. until when that was the, uh, uh, the dean of admissions. I remember there were students coming, and we would have meetings. We said, "No, this student doesn't doesn't qualify. Doesn't qualify." Mm -hmm. But really, when I personally look at the 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 decisions made to take these students in even if they didn't have the English requirement or they were not, 
today they are leaders in their country. Yeah. So really, I think that that far-sightedness that Dr. Hamid and many of the administrators had, that is why we have 96,000 alumni all over the world. And they are really the ambassadors of IIUM. Just and, to quote one example, when I brought, I was sent to Vietnam to get the number of students in Vietnam. There are not many Muslims in Vietnam. So I went to the mosque. I was asking the Jama'ah, are there students who would like to come and study in Malaysia? I, I was brought the money 25, with $25,000 and so on to, to get the student there. So they gave me about seven students. One stu none of them could speak English or Arabic or Malay. Brought them here. They were given the pre-sessional, as what had been mentioned, Dr. Tamim, pre-sessional studies to study English and Arabic for a year. And they graduated with Bachelor of Human Sciences, one in engineering, if I'm not wrong. She is now the millionaire in Pakistan, in, in Vietnam, a millionaire. She has a, a building of 70 sto 17 stories building in, in, in Vietnam. Thank you very much. Um, the next speaker was supposed to be Dr. Manzur Alam. He is not with us, but he has sent uh, a message. And uh, unanimously, Dr. Fatmir has been. Uh, he will. He is supposed to read it in Hindi. You know, uh, Dr. Manzur Alam is from India. I would have read it in Malay, but Dr. Fatmir is going to read it in Hindi. So. <laughs> so you want? You can read it from there, or you can come in front. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. No, it's okay. It's okay. You see, there was an order given to me. Uh, so when you when you are under somebody, then you have to accept the order. <laughs> so that that was just mentioned. Now those were. Uh, came here at the beginning, I was among them who studied here about Islam, uh, Arabic language and English in the presidential that was uh, established during the time by Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. So that is not my point here because I didn't have a chance to, to say something, but perhaps maybe let me just read what uh, Dr. Mohammed Mazur Alam has uh, written here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I met Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman first in late 1970s at Riyadh when he was Secretary General of the World Assembly of Muslim Youth. Afterwards, I used to meet him on quite frequent basis till 2019. He always emphasized that I am a Makawi who believe in universal brotherhood. He was not having any sort of prejudice biasness and tribalism of any nature. He always talked about equality, universal brotherhood, and universal justice for both men and women. He was a man of extraordinary traits, an exemplary Muslim and a reform-minded intellectual activist. He was an institution builder educationally, intellectually, and physically. His deep knowledge of Quran and Sunnah reflected in his works. Some of his marvelous publications include Parent-Child Relations and Guide to Raising Children, The Quranic Worldview, Revelatization, Higher Education, Muslim World, Marital Discord, Recapturing the Full Islamic Spirit of Human Dignity, crisis in the Muslim minds towards an Islamic theory of international relations, etc. What distinguished him, Rahimullah, from other Islamic scholars was that he was not wedded to traditional theories of Islam. His works inspire Muslim scholars, awakening their mind, urging them to find solutions within and stop impinging other for their downfall. He was an example of the critical thinking and progressive outlook, which are 
must for creating a revival and a renaissance in the Muslim world. His scholarship was infused and manifested with the integration of knowledge. He was one the best enlightened men, Muslim intellectual educator and a giant reformers. He spent his, his whole life for the development of education of Islamic world and always advocated the change of Muslim societies with knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah. With a noble vision and mission of a comprehensive Islamic reform project with reform of thoughts and education. His momentum works are the living testimony of his intellectual acumen. At personal level, he was having high scale of, humani of humili humility, sorry, but at level of knowledge, theory and Islamic approach. He was high on scale, deep rooted and with proper sources. Yeah, this is very long. We thought he sent one paper, now are four papers here. Yeah? So you have to be patient, let me just read. Huh? But it is wonderful, you know. He was a visionary, broad-minded and critical thinker. Once he makes up his mind on pertaining issues, he put them up very confidently and firmly without any fear of its criticism. He was a man with highest ascetic sense, as he used to say to me, you are having only one Taj Mahal, but I am building many Taj Mahals, including IAUM, which is really a marvelous combination of aesthetic sense and building of gener generations, and he proved it to be true. I always treated him as a philosopher guide, a mentor, a teacher, since I met him for the first time in 1970s, I referred him my guru as he possessed all the qualities which the word guru consists of in Sanskrit. He visited India four times to attend conferences and seminars organized by the Institute of Objective Studies. He was conferred with the LITT Honors Corsa by Jamia Hamdard, New Delhi in February 2001, and delivered two lectures at Aligar on child development, Islamic perspective, and violence and Islam in the year 2007. In the year 2007, he attended two-day international conference organized by the Institute of Object Objective Studies at New Delhi on power of peace in a globalizing world, and shoot it for a film under IOS future focus documenting Islam's vision and visionaries, values and movement, covering different aspects of his life and thoughts and works that future generation would find beneficial and constructive. In March 2010, he participated in the two-day international conference on crisis in Muslim minds, held at Patna, delivered a lecture on Quranic perspective in global civilization at Jamia Hamdard, New Delhi. And he delivered another lecture on parenting and child development and at IOS New Delhi. His passing away is indeed a huge loss, Rahimullah, with which cannot be described in words. It is the duty of all people who are attached to his deeds thought, knowledge, books written by him, especially IIIT and IAUM, they all must think of how to fulfill his dreams in changing global scenario, especially in view of post-pandemic era and changing technological advancements. I congratulate the IIIT, IAUM and Fairfax University of Academia for organizing this conference, which I am sure will go long way enabling new generations of scholars and researchers to learn about the intellectual, scientific, and practical contributions of Abu Suleiman as a luminary of contemporary Islamic thought. I wish the conference all success. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam. This is what we do in 
<laughs> Dr. Fatmir is not the only one. I think I have met many students, especially from the former uh, Russian republics who came here with no knowledge of English, no language of Arabic, no knowledge of Arabic. They only spoke their own uh, language and maybe the Russian language. And today they are lecturers who are teaching in Arabic and whose English sometimes are better than some of us who have been speaking English for a long time. So really, Alhamdulillah, this is one of those examples of you know, the, the, the far-sightedness of Dr. Abdul Hamid in terms of getting our young people from all parts of the Muslim world who are now leaders in their own, in their own uh, way. Um, but Habib Khirzin has been uh, a long time activist uh, in many, many areas. <clears throat> and I think he has also got a story or two to tell uh, about his experience and views um, of Dr. Abdul Hamid. Uh, may Allah bless him. Um, and uh, Pak Habib is one of the two uh, triple IT representatives from Indonesia. So with this, I invite Pak Habib to please make your... Thank you, Professor Aslam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi alladhi dhuminat sa'adah fi dunia wal akhirah addaha liman itaqa wa amana wa amila salihat alladhi yukafil mujahideen wal amilin al mujiddin ala sabrihim wa thabatihim. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala hadha nabil kareem wa rasul al-azim khataman nabiyin wa man tabi'ah hudahu ila yamiddin ama ba'd. It's indeed a great honor to me to be with all scholars. It's kam yusaiduni an akuma bil kulaima mujaza, inshallah, fi hadi layla. As a student, uh, I thought that Professor Abdul Hamid Sulaiman <coughs> is uh, Ab Qariyun Farid. He's genius. Ab Qariyun Farid. He's a genius, distinctive person. <clears throat> and he's also in his work, is, uh, and his thought was uh, ahead of time. Ahead, ahead of time. So I call him is a Rajulun Yani Alim Wa Sahsia Yani Mausu'ah is an encyclopedic encyclopedic uh, professor because in 1996 <clears throat> when I have a good time to have discussion with him uh, more than two hours with Professor Dawam Raharjo the former president of the IT of Indonesia and I was the secretary general in 96 I learned that Professor Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman is a person with encyclopedic thoughts. And the second time when I was invited to Adam's Center in Herendon, in the suburb of Washington, DC, I was with uh, Professor Abdul Aziz Twajiri from ISESCO. We were together from United Nations. We were both of us were invited to the United Nations uh, prior to the General Assembly. And then we went to Adam Center. We were invited by Professor Abdullah Hamid Abu Sulaiman and Dr. Tatonji next to us. SubhanAllah, Professor Abdullah Hamid Abu Sulaiman is a great person. He was kindly uh, moderating our discussion, Professor Fajiri and me. And I surprised when I talk about the uh, paradigm shift of the peace after the end of Gulf War, from the national security to the uh, human security, including educational security, cultural security, civilizational security. He paid great attention to me and I was, how come the professor paid attention on the issue which is uh, 
humanitarian uh, <laughs> uh, and, and, and peace issues. And I remember he's a professor of international relations. He's professor of politics. Oh, okay. So, uh, and then actually who invited me to Herendon was uh, Professor Taha Jabir Alwani and Dr. Ahmad Tatanji because uh, when he, uh, Professor Alwani, when he was a uh, rector of the International Institute of Social Studies in, in, in Herendon, I was the Mumasil, and <laughs> I was the representative of IISS in Indonesia. And actually who introduced me to Dr. Jabir Alwani is Professor Pat Misi and her husband, uh, Jerry Misi from uh, the founder of the Global Education Associate in New York. Because I was with Professor Abdul Hamid, uh, Professor Jabir Alwani and Professor Abdul Aziz Said uh, from uh, Syria. He's a professor in American University and Professor Ali Mazrui from Sunny State University of New York, Binghamton. Three of us were invited to be an international advisory board of this Global Education Association based in New York since 94 to 2005. I was there in 2005. Uh, so I got to know that Professor Abdul uh, Jabil Alwani has also brought, what do you call, thought about the humanities, about peace, about study, about education. We call it global education. It's part of the, we call it as maybe internationalization. Yeah. So when I uh, heard about Professor Abdul Hamid's thought on the IUM, yeah, it was for the second time when we visited uh, with Professor Abdul Hamid Pusademan to the rector of IIUI. IIUI stand for Inter International Islamic University of Indonesia uh, to be established in the time and it's now. Uh, Professor Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman brought with him the whole well, the master plan yeah, of this building of this uh, campus. Yeah. So when somebody I, I love this uh, word that IUM is Ab Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. In Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman is IUM. I, I, I like this word. But what's the impact of that? What is the impact of that? Because the most important is not only admiring or uh, what you appreciation of the to, to, to the thought and to the work of Professor, but what's the impact? is that a great impact to Indonesian universities. Now, some universities follow the way Professor Abdul Hamid will the, the campus, yeah, the way, yeah, yeah. And also the Islamization and internationalization. Yeah, okay, internationalization, yeah. And also some people who, uh, attended the training of uh, the courses by Abdul, Abdul Hamid Suleiman in Indonesia in different universities because I used to accompany Professor Abdul Hamid Abdul Suleiman yeah, to several universities. They got promoted to be rectors. <laughs> yeah, they got promoted even in the ministry and so on. And so, on. so there is a great impact of Islamization and also internationalization. The intellectual reform and also the reform of uh, civilizational or education reform. And I would like also to share with you one of the, uh, Professor Abdul Hamid is uh, the man with the uh, high sense of humor. <laughs> Every time we travel, yeah, he tell us the educational humor. <laughs> we call it educational humor, yeah, mashallah. Many, kind of humors and like Dr. Uh, Ahmad Tatonji yeah, always tell the, even when we were in Bukit Tinggi I was with Dr. Uh, Professor Jamil sit next to him I was the in the as a moderator yeah so when we start Professor Abdul Hamid love and told the humor yeah and the last humor I, I got from Professor Abdul Hamid when uh, when we 
finish our visit to IAUA, International Islamic University of Indonesia, and we visited also the vice president because vice president was in charge for this International Islamic University. So after discussing with the rectors and the PUT, so we went to the uh, vice president. In the end, before he left, uh, after boarding, uh, no, before boarding, after checking, Professor Abdul Hamid said to me, Brother Habib, I will not bother you again because I will not visit Indonesia again. <laughs> yeah, he's, he felt that he is uh, tired yeah, because he visited us, I think, more than 10 times. And he taught my son, his name is Nafis, who used to accompany Dr. Abdul Hamid in Jakarta and also in Jakarta, in Surakarta. Yeah. He told my son, Nafis, I like your name. Tomorrow, since tomorrow, I will call Abu uh, Ayman with your name, Nafis. <laughs> you give this uh, joke to us. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. One more. He's Adib. He's Adib. Wa mu'addib wa murabbi. Masya Allah. Always when we wait for what do you call somebody who pick at us, they always tell uh, what do you call uh, educational thing. Once when we were in Surakarta, one of the dean of the faculty of Sastra or the Adab, yeah, so that he told him about the uh, one of uh, Adib al, al Arabi. <coughs> When he said about wadahru uh, kal bahri la yang fakuda kaderin wa inama sofuhu benal waro lemaun lau kana lil mari fikron fi awakibihi masyana ahlaku kirsun wala tomaun darun ya guru aman wa amarun tamuru wa wa ayamun la khuda ya he said you know this man al mualif wa sultanul syuara <laughs> So he, he, he teach us about everything. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Pak Habib. I think definitely we can see the, the influence that IIUM has played in Indonesia. Certainly in the area of economics, I think we are, we are quite uh, advanced. Education. Uh, education will come, <laughs> Prof. Rosnani will speak a bit later. Uh, our next speaker, ever since I have known him, I have known him as being in an administrative post. Our current Deputy Rector of Academic Affairs, I think 30 years, he has always been holding some academic administrative post. So, so I, I invite our Deputy Director, Prof. Faris, to you know, share his experience with okay. us. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sharfil anbiya wa mursalin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in La hawla wa la quwata Allah billahi al-azim May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the soul of Our Murabbi teacher Allah yirham Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward All his efforts And I guess Tonight I'm very happy To see Many of my mentors and gurus. Uh, I think I came very late to this game, not like uh, all other, uh, I mean, my colleagues here. Um, so I guess to be brief, uh, number one, um, uh, of course, before that, I saw so many young uh, students and uh, staff uh, in front of us, uh, my advice is uh, uh, you need to understand uh, his thoughts and also uh, his ideas. Uh, maybe this, this session should be a beginning for you to understand him better and uh, for you to uh, study uh, um, his uh, legacy. Uh, I met... Uh, him for the first time in uh, Virginia, Triple IT uh, office. I think together with Prof. Nani when he came to US, uh, met, meeting the staff of IIUM doing, uh, at, at the time I was about to finish my PhD. A year before I completed my PhD, I met him and th that was the first time. I, of course, I listened to his lecture and of course, uh, Taha Jabil, Allah Yarham also lecture and 
Yati, our Sheikh Hisham Talib also was there. Uh, and of course, that is the first time that I listened to him, uh, give a very uh, big impression uh, upon me. Uh, and, and of course, uh, the effort, I, I guess, uh, I mean, for the young people at that time, I guess the main challenge is uh, we are trying to integrate the, the, the education. At that time, I think we feel that uh, the secularism is too much, the Western paradigm is, and then in fact, uh, we were studying in America and we realized this. So how can we come back to Islam and how Islam can contribute to this? And I think that is his strife and his jihad, I think. Uh, and then after that, of course, uh, I completed my PhD when I came back and how I came, how, how I came, how became, I mean, uh, closely interact with him is when like, like mentioned by Datuk Jamel, I was the founding uh, deputy dean of uh, Kulia of Engineering. Uh, and then at that time, I remember deputy dean is a member of Senate. Remember at that time? Uh, the, not only the dean, the dean and deputy dean is a member of the Senate at that time. So since that time, I've been meeting him at least once a month, if not more than that. And the... Unique thing about him is every time we meet him, the message is the same. So it's like he was brainwashing us until it's grained to our <laughs> to our brain until today. I mean, we become parts of his ideals. You know, I think I'm not sure well if you met him. That is every time you meet him, and in fact, after he left the university, when he came back, also same theme, same story, same idea. Same, same jokes. Same jokes. <laughs> so until I think it grain, it, it, it I mean goes into our psyche, and I mean we become parts of, of, of his idea. So I guess um, one thing that maybe not many of you know is uh, before we set up the Kulia of Engineering, um, this was I mean we supposed to uh, start our Kulia of Engineering in July. 1994. So uh, early 1994, uh, some of us were called to his office. Uh, like Dr. Jamil mentioned, at that time, the university only had uh, law, faculty, economics, and IRKHS, Islamic Review Knowledge and Human Sciences. And engineering is next, number four. And engineering is the first science based kulia for the university. So in a very late afternoon, and this is after Asar, you know, meeting after Asar, and he's quite common with Dr. Ablavi Abu Sulaiman, is we meet after Asar, and he will go to Maghreb and Isha. Uh, and sometime our Senate also start 10 in the morning, uh, and then we continue. <laughs> if it is a Friday prayer, we, we, we break for Friday, we continue until Maghreb maybe. Okay, so that evening, uh, early 1994, so some of us were called. Of course, I am the poor guy, the young carrying the bag. The, and then, of course, we have uh, in the room uh, uh, Professor Anis Ahmad, uh, Jama Bazanji, uh, Professor Imtiaz, our first dean of engineering, and uh, Sufyan, Sufyan Ali Rahim. Okay. So, and then, because this early uh, 1994, uh, Kulia will be starting in July. So his first question for us is very easy. How is your engineering different from other universities engineering? So just imagine after ASAR meeting, and that is the other question. <laughs> so, so we were caught off guard. Oh my God, this will be a very, this is like a, supposed to be a three day, three night seminar, you know? So he was throwing us that question because of his passionate about this integration of knowledge. And he plainly mentioned to us, if your engineering is just the same as others engineering, don't do it. Don't waste your time. No added value, nothing new. Let others do it. So what will be your unique? Uh, what will be your new? Because you will be engineering at, International Islamic University. So that is what we deliberated. 
So maybe if you want to know the content, that will be another <laughs> seminar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we deliberated and uh, and and as, as I mentioned, the challenge was because engineering was the first science-based course. Yeah. So and before that, he was talking about Islamization of more human science. So it is a first science-based course. Yeah. And Alhamdulillah, after that, uh, following the engineering, then the university started the course of medicine. I think next is course of medicine. Dato Tahir come join, and then after that is architecture, so on and so forth, and it expand. And I uh, agree with what Dato Jamil mentioned that. Uh, looking at the rectors, he is the rector that really expand the university from a small setup in Petaling Jaya, okay, and then uh, going to Gombak and then the Kuantan uh, campus. I think his uh, legacy and his idea was that. And like mentioned by some of our brothers, he's very meticulous. Uh, he is very concerned, even the calligraphy of the mosque. Uh, we were there looking at somebody trying to, you know, uh, make this. Uh, if you go to our mosque, it's very unique, uh, Moroccan, whatever. So that it was very meticulous. And I don't know, some of you know or not, the calligrapher, the, calligra the, 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 the verse of the Quran, uh, he always go there and say, hey, there's a mistake there, missing two dots. Uh, you know, <laughs> so missing, I'm not sure. Huh? missing an alif or something. He was very, very particular about that. And he is very practical. Uh, people who are working in the development, uh, he always uh, mentioned to, to us how about how he designed the mahalla. Why it is uh, four, yeah, why it is four in the mahalla, okay? Uh, together and separate, why not one, why not two? He has all his argument. Uh, until, to, until how he designed the, the toilet, the toilet uh, yeah. yeah, he also mentioned this. So it's very particular, I mean, particular about this. So he is a planner. Okay, but uh, let me finish by, uh, agree. I cannot agree more with our Dr. Fathi about that when he talked to us, he's, 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 he's really a contemporary scholar. He does not live in the past. He's, talking, he's looking forward. He's a mujtahid. He make ishtihad very innovative, trying to solve real problems, not, not using the, the, the old method. And he's very concerned about education. For him, education is the only solution. He always mentioned to us in the Senate, brother, forget about my generation. We are hopeless. <laughs> okay? But let us develop the next generation. And then he said, read the Quran. Why Musa? Why Prophet Musa people was lost for 40 years. He said, why? Uh, this is what I learned from him until today. This is the thing that 40 years. So 40 years, why? To build a new generation. Yeah, to get rid of all these hopeless people and to build the new generation. You know, that, that sort of thing. You know, he's very, uh, very long, long, long vision and vision. And, and I guess uh, we should take uh, really uh, my last assignment to our young students and lecture, uh, lecturers is uh, go and read his writing, you know, especially the crisis in the Muslim mind uh, book. And then, of course, there are many other books, methodology in Islamization, blah, blah. So I think uh, that is how I think you can. Wabillahi Taufiq Hidayah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Faris. You know, two points. I remember Dr. Hamid was really the architect and designer of the Gombak campus. Mm -hmm. But if you remember, he never was there when it actually officiate open. He left the country. Uh, and I remember when he came back, mm -hmm. the first time he came, he was so fascinated with the green. Yeah, uh, Because in economics, for example, we have palm oil trees. Now, of course, quite old, need to be uh, replanted. But he was so impressed how the... Because when he left, it was all brown. It was all brown, it's all sand, there were no trees. And when he came back about maybe 10 years later, it was all green. So I, think, I remember he was very, very happy to come back and see the green around the campus. Um, our next uh, speaker will be Prof. Ibrahim Zain, who um, was with us, I think, we, this morning we heard for 23 years. So I now have the pleasure to invite uh, Prof. Ibrahim to please share uh, your, your experiences and your views on Dr. Al-Hamid. 
Um, and you have 10 minutes, but you can take another extra minute for your translation just now. Uh, no, I, I, no I, I'm going to speak in English. <laughs> so I, I will save the one minute for somebody else, I guess. <laughs> or perhaps two or three minutes for, for others. Now, I, I think what I'll be doing is just, just continue the excellent work which was done by my learned colleagues uh, by bringing in stories. And these stories actually reflect a kind of a shared memory. As you can, uh, these <clears throat> stories actually would reflect a kind of a shared memory between all those actually who were around this great man. And, and they also reflect his greatness. Uh, one of my interesting stories is a personal one. Uh, and the second one is not personal. It was a public and it was done publicly as well. And perhaps some of you might have uh, some memories about that story as well. Now, the first one, uh, I was really annoyed. I was in the administration of IIU, uh, of, of the Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. And one day I was very annoyed with the way things were done in the, inside the college. And I went to his office and I start speaking in such a way that, I mean, he usually I'm a soft-spoken person. So I went to his office and knocked on his office. He said, welcome, yeah, come in. So I went inside and he said, I said to him, I needed to share with you some of my worries about the, the college, the Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. And then he said to me, yes, what is it? So I started to speak more than 20 minutes and I was very bitter and angry as at the same time. And he never actually interrupted me. He was just listening and I was saying all the things that I said. And after I finished, he said, Ibrahim, why don't you go and pray Maghrib? <laughs> and then after that, we will talk. <laughs> I said, okay, okay. <laughs> so I left to the mosque. The mosque was not far away from his office. So I left, uh, prayed Maghrib. I mean, there was a time. I mean, I, I left maybe half an hour before Maghrib. So I left, I took my wudu and then prayed Maghrib. And then said to myself, oh, that was really annoying, I guess, to go and speak to your boss <laughs> this way. <laughs> and, and, and the guy was was really patient with me. So I was ashamed of myself to go back and, and, <laughs> and open the discussion again. So I never came back to him. <laughs> After Maghrib, I took my things. Yeah, that's right. After Maghrib, I took my uh, things and then left home. And, and he never asked me after that why you didn't come and discuss the things with me. That was a learning experience. I mean, some of you, I mean, uh, Dr. Jamil spoke about the leadership. That was actually the kind of leadership we needed in the university. I mean, a young university where there are so many young people from different backgrounds and different cultures. And it was very difficult, I guess, for us to understand each other. But he was the one, I guess, who understood everything and knew how to diffuse the tension. I mean, that, that was one of his, his, his characteristics as, as a magnific, magnificent <clears throat> and magnanimous also leader. It's just how to diffuse tension. In my case, it was very clear. The second time was in Senate. There was this, I think, Bosnian student uh, or maybe Albanian. I'm not so sure about the, his ethnic background uh, or national background. Uh, he was... Uh, in love with one student. And then he was meeting her in Sha'alam, talking about uh, they are wanted to get married. And this this uh, group of, of this Khalwa Singh, who, who are they? Yeah. Islam. Yeah, Agama Islam, they called him. With the la lady, with Khalwa, and took him, and they wanted to file a complaint about him and send the thing to, to IIUM. And then it was sent to IIUM. Uh, there was a decision uh, among the academic administrators that this student should be expelled from the university because this is an Islamic university. Okay. 
And the case was brought to Abu Suleiman. Abu Suleiman said, well, what's the problem? Uh, then they said, they caught him in Khalwa, who said, just tell me what is this Khalwa? <laughs> <laughs> they said they were sitting in a cafe in Sha'alam. He said, that's not the Khalwa. <laughs> What's the next agenda? <laughs> it's not open for discussion. <laughs> What's the next agenda? So we went to the next agenda, and the student graduated and got married to the lady, alhamdulillah. <laughs> and everything was finished. Now, these two stories, as I said, shows that the type of leadership that he had. And I agree with uh, 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 Dr. Datu uh, uh, Jamil that it, it's not only because of Mecca. I guess he was somebody who was born to be a leader. And you can see this in his eyes, the way he would deal with others and the way he will manage others. No, he's not forcing anybody to do anything. But the persuasion, I know this also for a fact, I mean, the first time he brought me into academic administration was just by the by. I thought it was by the by, but it wasn't. Okay, uh, he he wanted this precessional uh, 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 portfolio inside admission and records uh, under uh, Datu Jamil. At that time, he was the dean, and he wanted to have this unit, uh, the precessional uh, studies. <coughs> Uh, so he studied my file. I'm pretty sure he did that. That's after after the thing. Uh, and he knew everything about me. And then once he came to where I was uh, uh, stationed in my office, just passing by, and he found me and then he said, Ibrahim, can I talk to you? I said, okay. He said, yeah, Akhi, we have this problem with these students coming from all over the world, coming with zero English, zero Arabic, and we would like you to manage them. Is that okay with you? I said, let me think. The next day he sent me the letter of appointment. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed, I guess, that, that thing working with, with, with Datu Jamil. I mean, he's also, uh, uh, not because in front of him, I mean, I learned a great deal uh, how to manage, I mean, academic uh, uh, affairs and academic things uh, with these students. The last story I would like to finish with the Albanian students. And I was, was saying this story because uh, one Albanian was telling us the difference between Albanians and, and Turks. Uh, the story goes like this. The Ottoman uh, uh, Sultan was once having audience from this king of Albania, I mean, the one who was ruling Albania. At that time, Albania was not more than like uh, less than 1 million people. And the Sultan was bragging and tell him that my subjects, my Raiyat, are so many of them. Uh, and you have only like uh, less than 1 million. He said, Sultan, let me tell you this. You are a Sultan, yes, over 1 million people. Okay, but I'm a king of a, over not less than one million sultans. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the Albanian students, when they came, they were quite colorful, I mean, in their background. They know nothing about civilization because they were caught into Albania and they were completely sure, cut sure. off the world. Yeah, we had an elevator in Mahalla Abu Bakr. Yeah, that tall one. So what they did, they took the sofa and put it inside the elevator, and they were going up and down with the elevator. <laughs> and they tell everybody not to get inside. So the students came to me and I mean uh, complained about what is going on. Uh, and then I went try to diffuse the tension and convince them not to do this because this elevator is a public uh, property and public place which is used, which is supposed to be used by everybody. Now, the second thing was about the Albanians and the Kalantanis. So we had a Kalantani team 
and we had an Albanian team. And they were one of the best inside the, inside the university. And the final, the cup final this was- is football. Yeah, football, yeah. yeah. Football. The cup final between the, the, two, the two teams. So the referee, who was, I guess, a Kalantani at that time. I don't have anything against Kalantanis, by the way. <laughs> so when they started, he gave a penalty to the Kalantanis. So the Kalantanis scored. And then the Albanians uh, scored also. And then the same referee gave another penalty to the Kalantanis. <laughs> and then the Albanians were upset. So they are beaten up the referee. Oh. All the players. And those who were watching the play. <laughs> and then the student affairs, I guess, decided that these Albanians should be shipped back to Albania. <laughs> and that decision was taken at, at the lower level. So I, I was the one to convey the decision to the to Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. And then he said to me, What happened? Then I explained to him what happened. He said, No, they should stay. Which was quite strange. I mean, at that time, we were a small uh, university, and <laughs> such a behavior should not actually be condoned or accepted. But he was the one who uh, was doing this. And I think what the message he was saying, well, they are coming to us, and we are here to educate them, not to send, back, send, back, <laughs> send them back to from where they came. And I think it was a great lesson. I guess all these Albanian students uh, made it big. Uh, in different places, I guess Fatmir is one of them, but I'm not so sure whether <laughs> Fatmir was <laughs> at that time in, in the football match or not. <laughs> I think I should stop here and give some time to, to others as well. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Ibrahim. The one thing that always comes when you think of Dr. Hamid is Ummah. I think this was the one word that I kept hearing over and over again. And so in that sense, I think we heard it this morning as well. He was really a person of, of the Ummah. And, and certainly the examples you are giving show that he was concerned about people from all over the world. Dr. Fatmir, you sure you were not involved with the, with the lift incident? Yeah? No? Eh? Okay. Um, our next speaker, um, this, it's not going to tell you my age, but Datuk Jamil was my teacher. And also, our next speaker, Datuk Muhammad Noor Manuti, was also my teacher. In the first year when we joined, uh, he taught us for a while and then he went to do his um, uh, PhD. Um, and, and so, I have the pleasure now to invite uh, Datuk Dr. Muhammad Noor Manuti to give his uh, experience with Dr. Hamid. Thank you very much. Shukran laka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa bihi nasta'in ala umur dunya wa ad-deen wa salatu wa salam ala rasul al-ameen sana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah our brother Professor Aslam distinguished brothers uh uh, in particular, Professor Fatih Malkawi, Professor Nizar Alani, and uh, <clears throat> my colleagues uh, from Temple University, uh, Professor Ibrahim Zain, and also Professor Faris, uh, Deputy Director, and my students also, uh, Professor Jamel, Professor Hizrin, Professor Rasnani, uh, and also my student, Dr. Badran Al. Al Hassan, who uh, organized a very successful conference in uh, Doha, Qatar, which I participated to uh, on Malik bin Nabi uh, and all other brothers and brothers Saad from South Africa during the high time of Abim. I still remember when I was then president. So, Alhamdulillah, the first interaction with Abdul Hamid. Uh, with me in the 70s when I was very much active in ABIM. I remember there was a first uh, training WAMI program in Morib, uh, Selangor, uh, one of the best beaches uh, resort in the country, but now it's no more uh, as it was. Uh, 
there was uh, it was a training program for leaders of Abim uh, nationwide. Abdul Hamid as a guest and Brother Anwar was then president. So on the first night he joined our program, Abdul Hamid complained at 2 a.m. He said, I got headache. What is this smell? So we were searching uh, in different parts of the uh, hostels. And we found at that time, actually, our uh, participants, brothers from Abim, brought a lot of durian. <laughs> so Abdul Hamid almost want to leave tomorrow. But brother Anwar uh, pulled him down <laughs> and uh, uh, consulted his local doctors and give uh, 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 to Penodol to him. And Alhamdulillah, <laughs> during the Fajr time, he was already ready for the jihad, he said. <laughs> but uh, Abdul Hamid uh, always uh, made a joke because he hates durian very much, not his wife. Even the dur flower, durian flower in ice cream, he cannot afford <laughs> to smell. I still remember when we went with him to restaurants and also uh, dinners in his house. He said one time, this is a very classical joke of Abdul Hamid, that if I enter Jannah, inshallah, I would rather see my house far away from Malaysian houses. <laughs> <laughs> Abdul Hamid disliked durian. But uh, of course, uh, we love uh, Rahil Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman very much. Intellectually, I still remember Professor Al Faruqi Al Shahid said uh, he is one of the best prince in the Muslim world, vividly in my memory in Philadelphia when we studied at Temple. And before he joined IIU, we still remember when uh, uh, the late Ajama Bazanji came and met Abim leaders, he said to us, we are going to send Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. We consider him as one of the best prince after the demise of Al Faruqi. So you better cooperate with him. <laughs> and Jamal Bazanji later on joined as uh, one of the deans, uh, dean of river knowledge and human senses. Allah yarhamu. So Abdul Hamid is a very dedicated, very serious. I also feel uh, afraid to meet him, but very, very uh, jovial. He made a lot of jokes and he rationalized on many things. When I said to him, I do not want to become Dean of Student Affairs. I want to produce books. How many books, brothers, you want to produce? <laughs> he said to me, don't worry, I will promote you later on. And then uh, I said, what, what book do you want to translate? I said, Azmatul Aqlil Muslim. Oh, very difficult. He said to me, very difficult. I was smiling. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This Abdul Hamid uh, <clears throat> appointed me as Dean of Sunni Affairs and later on five years. I was also Dean of uh, Continuing Education and Social Service for three years. Uh, one thing I found that Abdul Hamid, as we have discussed also, the way of his uh, uh, treatment to students, very fair, local and international, always in his mind, Ummah. And always also keep saying to me, I do not know very much about politics. I respect Brother Anwar Ibrahim, he is a man of politics, but I want to see that the Ummah must be excel in education. Very much in education. This is why I'm here. So I want you to become Dean of Student Affairs and you must dedicate to your post. He was complaining to Brother Anwar Ibrahim and also the late Siddiq Fadil, one of our best brains in uh, Islamic Dawah in Malaysia and also Islamic thought, uh, President of Abim, Rais Harakatul Shabab al Islam in Malaysia, after Anwar and I took over from him. He complained to Anwar and Siddiq Fadil, why you allow Brother Manuti to become President of Abim? I want him just solely for RIUM. He called immediately Brother Anwar Bhai, and he called Brother Siddiq Fadil. 
So I, uh, he summoned me to his office of dancer, as usual. 5.30, I still remember, brother, yeah, I want you to dedicate to Abim. I honor Abim, but give it to other brothers. This is very important. Huh? I want you to help me. This is for Ummah, for the future. So I said to him, I apologize to Dr. Abdul Abdulhamid And then he said to Brother Sidi Fadil, please advise him from uh, nine o'clock in the morning until five, I must see Brother Dr. Manuti uh, on campus. After five, I don't care. <laughs> he want to concentrate on Abim or whatever he want to do. So I always uh, go there. It happened that my office, Abim office, nearby in section 40, you know, nearby Pakiza restaurant, you still remember, it is the, the rounding mosque, Masjid Sultan Abdul Aziz. It is only five minutes from uh, IU campus uh, on Jalan University PJ. So I dedicated to IUM, and I dedicated to, to Abim from five o'clock until nine or ten o'clock. Although sometimes my wife was uh, a bit angry to me, no time for dinner with family. <laughs> okay, then uh, I see that Abdul Hamid actually uh, uh, very much developed the thinking of uh, students of IUM. Of course, Brother Faris mentioned about the conceptual of hostel. He said to me, one is ideal, two is awkward. There is a possibility of wrong behavior. Three is, uh, 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 two, yeah. Then four is perfect. This is the Ummah. I hope from this uh, composition of four students, they will strengthen the Ummah and learn the lesson of the uh, decline of the Ummah and build a new generation of the Ummah. So he put this idea in the journal of Aslimatil Ma'arifah, if I'm not mistaken, long essay. So this is why this man is a very much, uh, not only a theoretical person, uh, scholar, but a practical one, to see that uh, the idea of uh, knowledge to be translated into action oriented. And uh, even on uh, Rahmah Minu, as Tamim said this morning, now the unity government of Anwar Ibrahim has introduced Rahmah Minu, five dollar for lunch or dinner. But Abdul Hamid did uh, 20 years ago. Yeah. He said to me, Brother Manuti, I want to subsidize rice. Uh, he wants to subsidize everything because he considered that uh, poor people from Malaysia, from some part of the Muslim world, in particular Africa. I want to subtitle us. He talked to Minister of Education at that time, Sulaiman Daud. I still remember. So this is Abdul Hamid. And his idea of student development uh, went also to uh, Riyawa sports. He requested from Minister of Education to build four sports like in a very limited place in, on campus at IUM. So I still remember minister said to me, we can allow four as your rector one. We can allow only two. Two is enough. <laughs> so Abdul Hamid uh, satisfied with the instruction of the Minister of Education. And uh, I think uh, many things, the way that he uh, interacted with students, uh, many students were very happy uh, that like a father and other uh, the children when they were in uh, UN. And of course, many were became ambassadors of Islam. This is what he proud to say to many colleagues who came. And during the dinners, he said that uh, very, very uh, satisfactory statement of him to all uh, distinguished guests, his close friends, when he came to, they came to IUM and he entertained with dinners or lunch. He said that I'm sure that they would become good ambassadors of Islam. Okay, I think, um, of course, intellectually, I like Abdul Hamid. He has originality. Even I found that on the uh, notion of Hajj, he wants to expand the uh, uh, months of Haram. <laughs> Not only specific uh, in the context of Eid al-Adha for two days, huh? but he wants to expand and put that in 
Aslamatul Ma'rifah. So he is a mujtahid, although I know that some people were uh, not happy. I was in uh, Peshawar. Uh, I accompanied the delegation of leaders of Islamic movements, led by the late Mustafa Mashfur. We were in Peshawar uh, International Airport. At that time, I brought with me Azmatul Aqlin Muslim. So the late Mustafa Mashfur took it from me and he read a little bit and he saw uh, one page to another page. Later on, he said to me, This is the mind of American Islam. <laughs> So you can see that the uh, you know the the different uh, opinion from other sectors of the Muslim leaders, uh, in particular in the context of Islamic movements. So with that, I think uh, we must uh, say that Abdul Hamid has dedicated for ten years, I think, from 1988 until the year of 2000, eh? almost ten years. Although we we feel sad a little bit uh, because of treatment from the um, leaders of politics in the country after the crisis of uh, political uh, you know, upheaval during the time of Mahdi Muhammad with Anwar Ibrahim. But uh, overall, we should say that uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid made a very uh, great uh, contribution to knowledge, to education, and also building the ummah. And I still remember one of, of his biggest contributions is that uh, he instructed all Malaysians to have PhDs, if I'm not mistaken. So our close friend, who was then also one of the presidents of Abim by the name Razali Nawi, Dean Kuli of Law, at that time he was almost 60s, huh? or yeah. after 60s, yeah, in the 60s. Yeah. He compared Razali Nawi, Brother Razali, you must uh, do your PhD. So he succeeded. Alhamdulillah. So with that, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much. Um, I was one of those who actually benefited from this PhD requirement because in Malaysia, after you do your master's, you would come back and teach. And only after a few years, you would go for PhD. You get to be waiting in line. But when Dr. Hamid came, he said, no, you're not a lecturer without PhD. So everybody who was doing uh, master's, Straight away, you go and do your PhD. So quite a few of us actually benefited. Uh, we went immediately and got our PhD and came back. Um, Dr. Tamim and Dr. Mumtaz, you are not around? Right, so they are not here. So we are now uh, in our, our last uh, official speaker. Um, it's not planned, but it happens to be that Prof. Rosnani is the only uh, female speaker tonight. Um, but I just want, before I introduce her, when he came back, when, when I first met Dr. Hamid after he left Malaysia, it was 10 years later, 2008 in Jeddah. I remember we had a conference on Islamic economics and he came. And that was the first time I actually saw Dr. Hamid wearing the, you know, the, the juba with the, you know, and, and almost didn't recognize him <laughs> from his usual business suit he will wear in IIUM. And the first thing he asked, was not about the university. He asked about the school, <laughs> about the international Islamic school. And every time we meet, he'll be asking about the school. Yeah, so um, I, I'm just trying to say maybe what, uh, was it Paris mentioned? That he gave up on the older generation. <laughs> Let's talk about the younger ones. So with that, I invite uh, Prof. Rosnani to give her uh, experience. Uh, with Dr. Abdul Hamid. Thank you, uh, Prof. Aslam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa musaleen. Wa ala ahli wa sahbihi ajma'in. My dear uh, Brother Aslam and fellow brothers. Uh, it, you cannot hide it. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Uh, my dear brothers on the stage here, and also brothers on the floor and fellow students and staff. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, 
I really feel uh, honored when uh, Prof. Dawood invited me to be one of the witness uh, in this conference. And in fact, uh, actually, um, the whole gathering for this conference beginning for this morning was very uh, sentimental for me because it feels so happy to see all my uh, uh, comrades who <laughs> say the first generations, <laughs> the first generations of uh, uh, lecturers that were close, so like the Sahabat, you know, uh, with, with uh, the Prophet and our, our leader was uh, Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. And these are his, uh, his team, you know. So, to, and haven't, I haven't seen Prof Niza for so long since he left the university. So it's very, uh, what do you call this, uh, emotional in, internally you know, to see all my brothers. Uh, of course, we also miss the brothers that, 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 have, that have left us, like Brother uh, Jamal Bazanji and also Malik, Malik Badri, you know, and Pak Sidi from Indonesia. So, so this is really a blessed moment for me. Uh, they make me recall the, the works together that we did. And I think that's why uh, that is the greatest contribution of uh, Professor Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman because he laid the foundation for this university. Had we have a weak leader to, to hate this university in the beginning, we would not be where we are. So he, he was a very important person in laying the foundation of this university and also the development of the Ummah uh, uh, in, internationally, okay? Um, and Allah gave him that, uh, that opportunity within that 10 years that he was here. And we really felt the, the, the cut-off point when he left because, because the, the growth was going gradually. You know, there, there's a momentum, you can see that. But then suddenly, Allah deprived us of him. And then you can see that the university sort of like was in a state of wilderness for a while because at that time we were monitored very closely. Even the rector after him, Prof. Kamal, who is now not very well, okay, couldn't do much to steer back. And then things change. Uh, it makes me feel very sad when I notice that the, uh, the university is not going in the direction that it was moving, you know. So, Alhamdulillah, now we are blessed back with the president as the prime minister. We just pray that he can help steer back. Maybe he won't be the president of the university, okay. But he, he ensured that the president, the appoint a president, that is the vision. And also the, the rector who has a vision to continue this. And the work needs, needs to be continued. Otherwise, we, we're not going to go, we might not achieve our, our, our dreams. We have achieved it 50% maybe, but we need more. And I consider myself lucky because maybe I'm the only sister in that generation, okay, in that jail. Okay? And uh, uh, so I, I can testify to you from the perspective of a, a daughter and also as a woman because uh, I was there. And there was not many sisters then in the uh, Senate and also in the Dean, okay? Uh, I was there in 87 until he left. So I came a few years uh, earlier. And my first encounter with him was when I was uh, to be confirmed for my position as a, as a lecturer in the university. So I was interviewed in the committee that he chaired. And I remember that he asked, he provoked you a lot. You, know? <laughs> you cannot just say keep quiet. So, but but I'm also the type that responds to 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 uh, uh, questions. You know. So at, after I left the the interview, I don't know who one of the officer. I, I can't remember who said screw that you 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 replied to him because he likes people who are uh, uh, critical and and uh, what do you call this not submiss not submissive. Okay. So that was my first, uh, and all of all those things that uh, our earlier panels brothers have mentioned, I won't repeat because he's unique, he's very rare, irreplaceable, many good uh, characters, difficult to find. Even for me, for as a woman, I found him to be a very gentleman, 
and he treated a uh, woman or daughters gently. That's the way he treated me. Uh, of course, he did not he did not discriminate me. Maybe he discriminated me in the sense that he was more gentle to me than to the others <laughs> because I'm a woman. Okay, and when I joined the university in eighty seven, that was when the Malaysian National Philosophy of Education was formulated. So I don't know whether it was a coincidence that our center of education was established in that year when Anwar, Datuk Sri Anwar, was the minister of education and also the president of the university. Okay, uh, so that I was I was sort of shortlisted uh, uh, to to join the university, and it was established as a center. So a little bit about the department or school of education. It was a center of education, and we only service. Uh, pre-service teachers for a diploma course in the beginning, okay, and uh, and our 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 center became a department in 1990 just as the university approved KIRKH as a kulia, whereas we were in existence before KIRKH, but we did not become a, a kulia. We became a department under KIRKHS, and you know why? I did not know the reason until I was preparing the proposal to submit to Prof. Kamal uh, another time to the ministry of, uh, to propose the, 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 the department as a kulia. I went back to all the Senate minutes and I realized that there was a, a minute in the, I think 1989, 1990, or 19, close before the formation of KIKHS. Uh, in that minute, uh, Dato Sri Anwar as a president already approved the formation of the Kuliah of Education. But our brother <laughs> did not do that. You know? Instead, he only agreed for formation of KRKHS and we are to be put under, parked under the uh, KRKHS. Before that, we were parked under deputy directors. You know? Prof Kamal, he did uh, hers as well. So, and you dig further, you realize that he he is a person who wants uh, what you call this uh, capable people, the real people, and he did not promote that uh, kulia because at that time all the most of the staff were basically retirees from the schools. None of them have got PhDs, but they were experienced, and they have to they have to import Prof Asan Langudung from UKM, you know, to help with Prof Atan Long and so on. So that was the reason. He did not approve of a uh, of kulia. And it was after I got back from my PhD that, uh, excuse me. <coughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I'm coughing actually. Uh, then he, uh, he appointed me as the Prof Kamal, he appointed me as the assistant head of the department. I don't think any, any Department has an assistant head. <laughs> I think we were the only department with an assistant head. I was an assistant for two years. I, uh, and I attended some of the meeting with uh, my head of department. And then I realized he really made fun of the department of, the, the department of education under that head, you know? I wonder whether you remember Dr. Daniel. In Indonesia. Yeah. I was there and I was seeing that my head wasn't bothered when he was being uh, ridiculed, you know. But anyway, then he, they, I think they, 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 they saw me under probation and then they agreed to me for me to be promoted as the head. And this is something that I've never shared with anyone, okay, on my personal encounter with uh, Prof. Abdamin. <coughs> When I knew that they want to appoint me as a head, I went to see him. I said, Prof, I can be the head of the department, but I want you to do one thing. So please don't ridicule the, the Department of Education in front of the Senate members, because they also will look down at the department. So if you can do that, then I'll accept the, uh, the appointment. I thought you'd be angry with me because yeah, it's a young, young woman, you know, his younger sister would say, commenting on him. But he did not say anything. But I realized that from then on, he never said anything bad or, or uh, 
uh, condescending about the department. And that's how we managed to raise our image to, uh, to him. Now, in terms of uh, uh, excellence, I think he is a man of high excellence and he wants excellence. And this is what, when you mentioned about uh, him uh, wanting all the academic staff to have PhDs, and we will be able, whether we like it or not, us to do PhD and in the States in particular, not in UK, because the state has coursework, I think. And also he is very serious and committed in his mission, uh, visionary as well. And I can say that when I say he's uh, firm in, uh, committed to his uh, mission, is the mission of IOK. I think he was very committed to that because he would go in region and also global. And I remember, although I was still uh, just finished my PhD, turned into a head department, okay, 1996, something like that. We went to Indonesia, we went to Minanao, I think Projamil and uh, South Africa. <laughs> so, so we went all these places uh, and I will be the only woman <laughs> I guess I feel myself like a little sister to all these brothers. <laughs> okay. And we will be talking. Sometimes we were criticized by the audience. And sometimes, uh, but most of the time, we were received. So he, he, he really made a plan uh, that we, these are the missions, like, like the Minister of Trade and Industry sending missions. But this is not economic mission. This is mission for IOK. And alhamdulillah, that's, that makes the thing uh, wider in, in uh, is uh, propagation again. Okay? And the last, second last thing is that he is a firm believer in education as a mode of transformation. Uh, the one nobody can deny is that. And uh, <clears throat> among the things that he did through the education department, which I headed then, first was the establishment of the school, the international school. And it took him a long time to plan for the school. <laughs> and, and actually, he planned to have the school when education moved from the hill and come back to join the, the Kulia Engineering as its temp, uh, temporary place, the school will be established on the, on the hill. Okay, So that was his plan. But it took him more than two years because he was interested in, he's a perfectionist. He wanted to develop a very perfect curriculum. He brought a sister, Dr. Farida Shama from America and, 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 and Firia Al-Qaudi. To work on it, and I was thinking, you will never be able to produce a perfect curriculum if you are educationalist. You understand that, you know, you you change and you refine the curriculum as you go on. And he gave up because uh, if he if he wants to be perfectionist, the school will never be established. So finally, we said you must establish the school. Okay, oh, you don't have to wait for the perfect curriculum. So, but to to do that, we have all the staff helping in drawing up the curriculum. So that is the first thing that he did, you know, is, and the reason for this is he, he invited scholars from all over the world to come and help uh, <coughs> as uh, staff in IIUM. So he must, uh, to, to attract them, he must provide for the modes of education for the staff's children, you know. So that's why the international school is very important. And also it's important as a lab school for Department of Education, actually. And the second thing he did was what? After, after he has established the school, then come again, call me again to his office. We need to think of, as you said just now, taking care of the young children. So he talked about, we need to set up a, a nursery and kindergarten preschools. And so that's why we came up with the idea. He asked to study all the get the, the best curriculum for the uh, integrated uh, Islamic kindergarten. So we, we did that and finally we established it in at first in PJ and then we moved to, to Gomba and we changed the name from Child Learning Development Center to Educare. So that is a uh, uh, second project. There was another project that just shows his concern that he needs to raise a new generation. And that was a parenting course. You, I don't know whether you all remember, but this is a course 
He said that we have to give to all graduates of the university so that they can become good parents and raise good children. So he, he, his mind never stopped, you see. I, when I was the head of the department, I can see that we are moving. At least we come up with something uh, new, you know. So, so then we offered the course as, uh, he wanted the course to be a core course, but we don't have enough lecturers. So then make it an elective and pack it under general, general studies. So Prof. Jamal Armahum pack it under his kuliah, under general studies. And we even appointed uh, uh, one uh, lecturer to become a full-time lecturer. But, but now we know that we realize that it is stuck in the co-curriculum <laughs> department. Eh? <coughs> so we don't know what, what is the effect. But no, no study has been done on that because I think we should, we should uh, do evaluation among the graduates from this course, from that generation. See whether now that as parents, do they find it useful or not, especially for both mothers and fathers. I think that would be interesting to find out. It's something that we should do. Okay. And the last thing, uh, he did not stop. After he left the university, we realized that he wrote the book, Parenting. So uh, he's on the right track. But we, we, we have failed him in the sense that we just left it there. You know, we did not develop it as something that is uh, uh, useful for the next generation to raise their children. I remember when I was designing the course with a, a, a few committee members, we, we said, how to do this course? This is Islamic uh, parenting course. Eh? So we say, let's, let's blend. We take something from Tarbiyah to Aulat by Abdullah Nasir Ulwan. And then we took the, the uh, child development courses, theories, you know, and practices from the West. And we find what is in line with uh, the Islamic values and worldview. So that's how we did it. And I think the student appreciated it. They appreciated it because I can see that they, they like it, okay? So, so now that it's become co-curriculum, the lecturers are not really specialists, but those who just volunteer. So I think that is, uh, uh, I don't know whether that, uh, the quality is being maintained or not, that's, that's the issue. So I, I, those are the points that I had with him. I realized that uh, he never stopped. He never stopped. And that's why I felt that when he left the, the university, I feel very sad because this is one man who I noticed never stopped thinking, uh, never stopped. Creativity, his, creative, his creativity never stopped. He always has new ideas. And he knows that he can do it because he has, he says, uh, he has the, the, the main power around him the team around him to, 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 to make it into practical reality. So actually, uh, the team was still there after he left, okay? Although some followed him to, to leave the university as well. But because we don't have somebody of that caliber, so it becomes, it, it, it changed to something else, unfortunately. Also because of the policy of the government. Remember, he started off KRKH, with double and double major to have that integration so that you have the ulama, intellect, intellect, ulama, you know. But after a while, the policy of the government was to make sure that only three years for graduate uh, bachelor program, not five years. So then actually that also is uh, something that is, uh, that changed the nature of our, our, our dream and vision. So, so the only one thing that I thought uh, if there was an opportunity to, to meet him, because he also gave me a book, very thick book in Arabic. I think Kanus, Kanus, uh, kan, Kanus or Kanzu, uh, Kanzu Jazira Al Bayan Baya Bina Bina Yeah, so, uh, so that's uh, Islands of Brothers, Treasure, treasure Brothers. Huh? So, so he gave that book, and I mean, I look at the content of the book. Wow, it's very good, you know. But then, uh, it, the way to teach, what I, I realized after going with him through this IOK dissemination theory, you know, and then uh, practically, uh, when they appointed me to be uh, the director for Triple IT, East and Southeast Asia after Prof. Bakar left, 
Okay, when went to Brunei, I think. <coughs> I told myself, I'm not going to do what the others have done before me. That means they go and give seminar and conferences everywhere. <laughs> I said, for me, if I look at the way Afaruki Almahum uh, has in his work plan, the final output are the textbooks. So I said that it's time now to write the textbooks. So that our students are not, every time when we uh, teach a course, they still use the Western textbook. So I said, I will focus on this. So when I went to Indonesia, when I, when I went to the campus, I said, we have to think of writing textbooks. Okay. So Alhamdulillah, I did not stay very long as a director because they appointed me back as, a, as, the, as the dean. So <coughs> Prof Jamil took over. Now, Alhamdulillah, I can see now books are coming. I think this is one progress. But the other thing I realized is that the book also is not going to be sufficient because what is important is what goes on inside the classroom. And I noticed that our pedagogy or methods of teaching the student have not changed. Just now we talked about criticizing the traditional this morning. It's still traditional. I remember receiving students from KRKHS into education for their masters and PhD. Uh, they, were, they, were, they were surprised at, at the way we teach, at least my class, okay? Because we don't teach, uh, we don't ask them to just keep quiet. They have to give the ideas every now and then, you know? So they said, across the river, we're not supposed to talk. <laughs> we're just supposed to receive the knowledge. Uh, oh, I say, see? So this is the thing. You want them to be creative and critical, but you just ask them to listen and take notes. So that is not the way. So I think that is something that we have to also figure out. And I've been working very hard to come up with what I call the Hikmah Pedagogy of Philosophical Inquiry, which is not new. It's just from, from the past. But to put it today, uh, so that our students become more critical and creative and communicative and collaborative and caring. The five C's, I call it. Uh, so hopefully, uh, we will move on, inshallah. Uh, we leave the mission of our dear brother, Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, uh, of whom we have very much to be grateful for to Allah in bringing him to, to us. So thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much, Prof. Rosnani. I had a bit of bias to Prof. Rosnani, a little bit more time. Uh, we are now at 10.45. I'm told that the bus is, is, is waiting to take some people back. Waiting for 30 minutes. Okay, so uh, the Tahir Mesawi has made a request to have a few minutes, but it has to be really a few minutes. So I'm really abusing my, my role. Thank you so much. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just uh, to share with you some of my personal encounters with the late uh, Professor Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Uh, the first time I saw him was in Khartoum uh, after the uh, demise of the late Shahid Farooqi. He came to arrange for the postment of the uh, International Conference on uh, Behavioral Sciences. And then I saw him after that in 97 when, he came, when the conference was organized. But I saw him just a person coming and talking and that's all. And then when I, I had just finished my uh, BA in economics, and I was attached to one great Sheikh businessman, uh, Sheikh Abdullah Makki. Uh, he was caring for especially students coming from Malaysia to learn Arabic. And he was also representing Triple IT. And also he was taking care of me and many others who came as refugees to Sudan in the 80s. I was a refugee. So uh, I was very uh, um, close contact with the late, uh, with the Sheikh Abdullah Makki. And one day he called me, it was in 88. He told me, brother Ahmed Ayad, my name at the time was Ahmed Ayad. Yeah, not in my, my, but I was known as Ahmed Ayad as a camouflage. So uh, 
do you want to go to Malaysia? Actually, I didn't know anything about Malaysia. I heard of it, it's somewhere in geography, but what is it, what does it look like? I don't know, I didn't know anything. Ya Allah. Okay. Uh, he told me, uh, director of the International Islamic University, uh, he was immediately after his appointment as rector of IIUM, he came to recruit teachers of Arabic. And I think at that time also he was negotiating to have uh, our uh, dear Professor Abdurrahim Ali uh, to join for the Center for Fundamental Studies. I told him, okay, uh, but, uh, okay, don't, don't think about, give, give me my, your, your, your certificate. I gave him just my certificate and that's all. But I did not count much on it, really. I didn't have any, any idea about it. I said, okay, this guy, he will take it. Maybe he will uh, forget whatever. So he gave it to Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. And I was surprised after I think two months, Abdullah Makki asked me to come to his office, get ready to go to, to Malaysia. How? Yeah, here is the accept acceptance. It was sent by fax, uh, by telex. There's a so and so has been given uh, acceptance in the economics uh, uh, master's program. Ya Allah, how to do? I didn't have a passport. So I had to look around to get a passport. Okay, so I got, I got a passport. I became so, uh, uh, yeah, throughout, so I got my passport and uh, I had to make my ar uh, fast arrangement for marriage. And alhamdulillah, it was done. So I had to go to, to Algeria to join my second half. And from there, uh, I gave an, a, a, a telex, I got a telex. Then he sent me, uh, they sent me another telex from the office of the uh, Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. Okay, so I had to, so when we came, 1991, I went, uh, it was Ramadan, went to the hotel, the next day, I had, they gave me a telephone number, Brother Hamdan Adnan. So I called him, I am so and so, uh, I have arrived. He told me, Dr. Abdul Hamid told me about you. Okay, and then uh, surprised that, he told me, okay, please wait for me at the hotel after uh, Asr. <laughs> this Abdul, Abd it was Ramadan, this uh, Adna, uh, Hamdan. Uh, uh, I will come to pick you up and your wife. Where? To the house of Dr. Abdul Hamid Usman to have iftar with him. So we went to that. And then from then on, alhamdulillah, close contact, close. Whoever wanted to have some, to have, to, be, to have a chance to study in this university from Tunisia, he will, he will call me, Ya Sheikh Tawansa. Okay, do you know this person? Do you know this? And he will immediately approve the year. That was the kind of, uh, many other stories, but this is just one think how he was a problem-solving person. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this, you know, personal experience really is something that many of us, I think we have our own versions of this. And I think this is just who Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman was. Uh, it's been a wonderful session. My apologies to everyone. Uh, it's gone beyond uh, the 10.30 uh, mark. Um, and I seek forgiveness for any shortcomings. Uh, sometimes we make jokes and we you know, it, it may hurt people. So uh, apologies to everyone if anybody was uh, offended. Uh, with this, I hand the session back to Prof. Daud for some announcements. Thanks for your effective management, Prof. Aslam.
And uh, I would like to thank all the brothers uh, who shared uh, with us their own personal accounts and experiences. It is an opportunity for us to learn from such a, because I'm a newcomer. Anyway, newcomer is seven years. <laughs> uh, one of the things uh, I would like to just to announce for the brothers and sisters here in the hotel, that we have uh, to leave and depart at 7.45. So the coaches or the buses will be um, uh, there outside in, this, in the main road at 7.45. The second, I would uh, request our brother and sister, the volunteers, triple IT student to be um, uh, around eight or even before eight at the university to help our participant and guide them. Um, also, um, you can have your own breakfast uh, quarter to seven, because there is at least, uh, we pray Fajr and go immediately to the uh, restaurant. Uh, one other thing is that um, um, we came to know also the rector is coming as well. So for the closing session. So we hope that uh, our closing session, part one, where we can um, deliver our resolution of the conference and so on before the arrival of the prime minister, will start 2.15 in the main auditorium. So I hope that by 2.15 we'll be there. Uh, as uh, the translator, uh, Dr. Alham said, so, so Humam said, that if you are in need of um, a headphone, please go and stay in the um, front uh, part of the hall. Um, also, we have a trip for the brothers, the international guests, uh, 23rd, and we'd like them to write their names and brother Arkham will remind you in the WhatsApp group so that uh, you can visit uh, Shah Alam and Butrajay and come back and uh, have lunch outside, not in the hotel. Um, also, please make sure that you hand over all the headphones. Um, <laughs> we will meet again. <laughs> we will meet again here. Yes, we will meet again here um, also for the dinner. Uh, tomorrow. So that will continue the witness session again for the next group of brothers and sisters who will share their own experience as well. Seven o'clock? Sorry, seven o'clock, yes. Seven o'clock uh, or seven fifteen just to have the dinner first and then we'll continue at around eight o'clock. We'll stop the, the session. Jazakumullahu uh, khairan, all of you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> 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 Checking out. <laughs>